You know, one of the fish that I enjoy catching with my family and friends when we're in the Keys is yellowtail snapper. You know, yellowtail are found all over the reefs in shallow water as well as deep water, but these fish are a little bit wary. You think you can just go out and catch fish, no problem? These fish are educated. They've been fished for week in and week out. The water's very clear and they've seen a lot of hooks. So using the correct techniques to catch these yellowtails is very, very important. It's not difficult, but you've got to do it right. Yellowtail are also delicious on the grill, fried many, many ways. They're a crowd pleaser, and most important, they're a lot of fun to catch. So use these techniques, you'll have a lot more success. Okay, so I'm gonna go over a little bit of the gear that we typically use for yellowtail. Uh, typically we're using rods that are light spinning gear with somewhere between 12 and 15 pound test monofilament line. I do like braided line for a lot of applications, but when we're yellowtail fishing, I like just standard Andy 12 pound line, typically. For hooks, we're typically using a number four circle hook, sometimes a number two, somewhere in that area. Just something fairly small and light wire. You don't need anything heavy. You need something that's fairly easy to be hidden in a small bit of uh, bait. Personally, I do prefer the leaders be a uh, 15 pound fluorocarbon. So fluorocarbon is great because it is very, very clear and when the water that you're fishing is super clear it tends to help hide it a little bit better and it must be light you know 15 pound is somewhere in the right area sometimes we've got to drop down to 12 or even 10 when the yellowtail are shy so all in all for the gear you don't need anything that's very very expensive it's pretty simple overall but it's how you use that gear that determines whether you're going to get a bite or you're going to spend the day soaking your baits Another important part of yellowtail fishing is the chum. You know, yellowtail are a current feeder. That means they set out over the reef, up off of rock piles and drop-offs and so on, and as little bits of shrimp and squid and whatever else goes drifting by, they scoot up in the water column and they grab those bits and eat them. And that's how they grow and thrive. So by adding chum to the water, you're increasing the amount of bits that are going across and through that water column and getting those fish attracted to the area that you're fishing. All right. We're going to drift our bait back in there with that ball of fish that are feeding uh, in that chum slick. For a chum product, we're using Yellowtail Up, which is a dry and liquid combination that we mix on the boat. And typically you hang a chum bag over the side and it continues to melt and trickle stuff uh, out. With Yellowtail Up, being that it's not frozen, we're using it uh, in a little different technique. Now you can put it in the chum bag that's included and drop it over the side and that will trickle out continuously a little bits. But uh, what we found, at least on this day and in numerous occasions, is we mix the product up and we'll throw just a very small pinch of it in the water about every 10 to 20 seconds and let that drift back. And we'll do that for a few minutes. And then we'll start throwing those pinches back along with our hooked bait and letting that drift back uh, naturally to the fish. And that's proven very, very effective. Okay, so we've got the gear covered, we've got the hooks, uh, for bait, we're either using small squares of squid, about the size of a quarter, or a piece of peeled shrimp seems to work pretty good, and it holds on the hook very well as well. Uh, kind of funny, the last uh, somebody had left some bait in the freezer that uh, had been there for quite some time. We took it with us, uh, peeled it, and put it on there, and sure enough, it was working very, very well that day. We were catching them on squid, but the peeled shrimp was probably catching them two to one over the other, so uh, I would recommend peeled shrimp starting as a, a great go-to bait. 
We didn't talk about where we're fishing. You know, yellowtail are found all over the reefs, but typically the thoughts are the deeper water holds the bigger fish. The shallow water typically holds the smaller fish in larger numbers. So in this instance, we're fishing off of Marathon in the Keys, and we're in about 50 foot of water where it rolls down to 70, maybe 80 feet. So all along the Keys from Miami all the way down through Key West, there's a reef structure and it starts at about 30 foot and rolls off to about 85 feet and then is sand past that. So most of these yellowtail are going to be up on that reef at one place or another and you'll find that very easily as you look at your fish finder as you're driving around checking out spots. Now one thing that I find is important and most people will agree is current. Because these yellowtail are current feeders if you do not have a little bit of flow going away from the boat in one direction or another, you will not have yellowtail feeding. You see yellowtail set up over the reef and wait for the baits to swim or float by them. You know, they're not out like a wahoo or kingfish or something where they're out prowling looking for something to eat. They're sitting in one spot just waiting for that stuff to come to them. So you've got to have some type of current. So what we find as optimum for fishing yellowtail is current that flows from the shallow water out into the deeper water and that uh, varies depending on the tides of course and uh, the days and we understand that sometimes you just gotta fish when you can fish and make the best of it. If you can anchor up like we did on this occasion in about uh, 40 to 50 foot of water and we were fishing on the downward slope of probably 70 foot of water where the yellowtail were hanging. So what we did was uh, once we anchored uh, we started dribbling out bits of yellowtail up chum on a continuous basis just throwing little pinches out there waiting a little bit and what this is doing is gathering the fish and typically what happens is one fish sees some activity and that draws another one which draws another one and then you get a competitive type feeding mode or a feeding frenzy and these fish balled up somewhere behind the boat. Now a lot of times you won't see these fish behind the boat. Uh, you know we've seen video where they're right there 10 feet away and you can see this cloud of yellow. That doesn't happen as often as uh, you might think at least at certain times of uh, the year. And In this case we were fishing uh, late October and the bite was really good but the fish were not balled up directly behind the boat. So after giving them a little bit of time uh, to locate and start eating our chum and our bits uh, that are drifting back, we hook up a chunk of squid or a chunk of shrimp. And here's where the technique uh, comes in that's very, very important. We take a small handful of yellowtail up along with our bait, throw it in the water at the same time, and we point our rod tip at the water so that the bait is pulling line off very very freely. Uh, we want kind of a belly in our line from where the last eye of the rod and the reel are at so that there's very little friction as this line pays back and this bait drifts back. So again it's very important to see that bait just drifting back with the current and with the other bits of chum at the same rate. And we'll just keep feeding that out. Now typically the current itself is enough to pull the line off the reel. Once in a while the reel would get snagged a little bit and we'd have to bump it just to keep uh, the line going. But one thing we tried not to do was lift our rod tip or jerk the line off. It should flow naturally. And this is where the patience comes in. You want to keep drifting that bait back and back and back and just keep letting line out. And over time as you watch the line peel off the reel you'll get kind of an idea of how fast it's actually going out uh, on a normal speed. And as you watch that line, all of a sudden that line's going to start ripping off that reel at a lot faster speed than normal. That means the fish has grabbed your bait and he's running away with it. Now at that point, you simply close the bail of your reel and start reeling, uh, tightening up that line. And you should have a yellowtail hooked up or a mutton or a mangrove snapper. The technique is uh, very, very similar for all of them. Um, if you miss the fish, that is you start reeling and nothing happens, you know, go ahead and open that bale and drift it back a little bit further. 
The reason for that is a lot of times uh, if you miss the fish, the bait will still be on the hook. And rather than waiting that two or three minutes for that bait to drift way back there in some cases, give them a second chance to eat it. And if you don't get a bite in uh, 10, 15 seconds, then go ahead and reel it in, check your bait, and repeat the process again. Now there's also another type of fish called a file fish, almost uh, kind of a combination between a, a, a snapper looking thing and a trigger fish, more on the trigger fish side. And these fish are able to follow your bait back and pick the meat off the hook without you even feeling it. So if you're drifting back quite a few times and you're not feeling anything but you're calling up empty hooks, it could be due to file fish. They are sneaky little things. and. Sometimes they're unavoidable, you just have to deal with them. Well, there you have it. Yellowtail fishing secrets and techniques. I'm Joe Pollock with Aquatic Nutrition, reminding you to take your friends Take your family, take your kids, catch lots of yellowtail snapper, and enjoy your time on the water. And remember, bring chum or stay on the dock.